In this screencast, we will also talk about, <clears throat> sorry, we will now talk about another advanced control method called inferential control. So inferential control is essentially just using a model to make one of your measurements a proxy for another measurement. And the main idea or the reason why you would use inferential control is that the thing that you really want to measure is really hard to measure or it has um, measuring it has associated with it a large um, sensor transmitter dead time right so the idea for inferential control is to reduce this dead time now you might think about it but inferential control really happens all the time and the reason why is because most sensors don't actually directly detect the value of your process variable so for example flow meters flow meters they are often orifice plates, orifice plates, and they don't actually measure the flow. They measure orifice plates that measure a change in pressure. Or you might have a thermocouple. A thermocouple is not actually really measuring the temperature. It's measuring some millivolt, millivolt output. or a level sensor. Level sensor is often measuring hydrostatic, hydrostatic pressure. And so there needs to be a good model which converts what this thing is actually measuring into the thing that you want it to measure. Another example is a thermometer. A thermometer is not really measuring temperature like one that you ha would have in your house. What it measures is the height of a mercury column or an ethanol column. And that has to be really well correlated to temperature so you can read the temperature off of the thermometer. But there are assumptions that go into it. Specifically for a level sensor, for example, if it's measuring hydrostatic pressure and converting that into a level, well, you better be sure that you know what the density of your fluid is. And the same thing is true in, in inferential control. You need to have a model, but it needs to be a good model. Anyway, in general, you have process variables that are easy and rapid to measure, things like pressure and temperature, and these can be used as proxies for your desired process variable, which are often hard to measure, like a composition variable. So inferential control is often used when excessive, excessive dead time, um, when you have excessive dead time with your sensor and this must be avoided. This must be avoided. Especially because as we've talked about in here um, process control um, systems are very sensitive to dead time. Right. So if you have dead time this can result in oscillations, oscillations, and instabilities. That's if you have an aggressive controller. Or dead time can result in sluggish performance. And that would happen if you are aware of the problem with oscillations and instabilities. And so what you do is you program the controller to be conservative. Conservative controller. Right? <clears throat> so for example, if you have um, a large dead time, you could have oscillations that look like this, which are a problem because they last a long time. But if you have less dead time, then you can program your controller to have oscillations that die out more quickly. Another reason to use um, inferential control is that cost, your cost is prohibitive. So you, your analyzer sensor may be very expensive. So online analyzer sensors are expensive. So this would be a reason why you would 
use inferential control. And in particular, yeah, both of these scenarios um, apply to air analyzer sensors, right? Because analyzer sensors have excessive dead time, or they can, and they can be expensive. So in the case of having an analyzer sensor, or sorry, your ultimate controlled variable being um, a composition, a lot of the times it is advisable to use inferential control for these two reasons. Another reason to use inferential control is that maybe the required the required analyzer sensor transmitter isn't even available. In other words, it just no one's ever developed a sensor that, that does that, right? And so for inferential control to work, you have to be able to measure one of these easily measured process variables, like temperature or pressure, and relate that back to your composition variable. In other words, a good model is needed. Just like in feedforward control, you need a good model. You would also need um, a good model here in the inferential control. So let's take a look at a quick example of that. So imagine that you have a distillation column. <clears throat> in a distillation column, the tray temperatures often correlate very highly with your product compositions. So in the end, what you want is you want your ultimate controlled variable to have a particular composition here of your bottom's product. And that's really what you want. But it's really hard to measure or uh, to measure the composition of this bottom's product online, meaning um, doing it in an automated fashion. There's a lot of dead time. The analyzer or sensor is expensive. Um, and so what you need to do is you need to know um, a particular correlation. What, um, what process variable correlates really well with the bottom's product composition? And you may say, well, look, I know from just from measurements we've already done, we've taken the time to, to do this measurement, and so we know what these correlations are. I know that the temperature of tray 10 correlates really well with your bottom product composition. So for example, if, you're, if your bottom product composition that you're worried about is your mole percent of propane, and you want it to be low, and you notice through, through measurements is that the, the temperature of tray 10 correlates pretty well with your mole percent of propane, then when you measure tray 10, and you measure it to be say 84 degrees C, then you can pretty much conclude that the mole percent of propane coming out the bottom's product is close to 4%. And so you might want to use tray 10 as a proxy, the temperature of tray 10, as a proxy for the mole percent of propane. And so you might have a cascade control where you have the temperature sensor here, a temperature controller here, and you know you want your temperature of tray 10 to be, uh, so let's say, 84 degrees C. And so you have the temperature controller delivering a remote set point to this flow controller in this cascade control fashion. Now remember the example that we talked about before with cascade control is that you might also have your online analyzer sensor here. This is in the case where you could actually afford it, and but you wouldn't want to use it heavily because there has there's a lot of dead time with it. This analyzer sensor could deliver another remote set point here to this controller so that deviations in this, con in this correlation, which will take place on a very slow time scale, can be eventually corrected for by this um, very, very conservative or sluggishly programmed controller here. And the reason why you, uh, sorry, the, oops, I didn't even put in the controller here. Er, 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 there's your controller. By this sluggishly programmed controller here. And the reason why you want to program, program it sluggishly is because this has a lot of dead time on it. So it cannot be an aggressive controller. And so this would be a case in which you would use inferential control as a control, as an advanced control method to relieve a lot of the burden on this primary controller. Uh, because the primary controller needs to be very sluggish because you have a lot of dead time on the sensor. And so this would be a method of inferential control. You're using the temperature of tray 10 to uh, act as a proxy for what this composition is. And you have this correlation, you have this good model, but the model can be adjusted slightly by this feedback controller here. 
Now one last thing to point out here with this um, model is that tray 18 does not correlate well with the mole percent of propane. So uh, its temperature is very, has a very narrow range of variation over the mole percent of propane that you're worried about. And in that case, because you have maybe a noisy temperature sensor, then um, this would not be a good uh, inferential control um, proxy for your mole percent of propane.